Sixth lesson. A mendicant who is fitted out with one robe and a bowl as second article will not think, I shall beg for a second robe. He should beg for such a robe only as is allowed to be begged for, and he should wear it in the same state as he receives it. This is, and see, see Lesson 4, Section 1. But when the hot season has come, one should leave off the used-up clothes, one should be clad with one or no garment aspiring to freedom from bonds. Knowing what the revered one, and see, see Lesson 5, Section 1. When the thought occurs to a mendicant, I am myself, alone, I have nobody belonging to me, nor do I belong to anybody, then he should thoroughly know himself as standing alone aspiring to freedom from bonds. Penance suits him. Knowing what the revered one has declared, one should thoroughly and in all respects conform to it. 1. A male or female mendicant eating food and see, should not shift the morsel from the left jaw to the right jaw, nor from the right jaw to the left jaw, to get a fuller taste of it, not caring for the taste of it, aspiring to freedom from bonds. Penance suits him. Knowing what the revered one has declared, one should thoroughly and in all respects conform to it. 2. If this thought occurs to a monk, I am sick and not able, at this time, to regularly mortify the flesh, that monk should regularly reduce his food, regularly reducing his food, and diminishing his sins, he should take proper care of his body, being. Page 72. Immovable like a beam, exerting himself he dissolves his body one. 3. Entering a village, or a scot-free town, or a town with an earth wall, or a town with a small wall, or an isolated town, or a large town, or a sea town, or a mine, or a hermitage, or the halting places of processions, or caravans, or a capital, too, a monk should beg for straw, having begged for straw, he should retire with it to a secluded spot. After having repeatedly examined and cleaned the ground, where there are no eggs, nor living beings, nor seeds, nor sprouts, nor dew, nor water, nor ants, nor mildew, nor water drops, nor mud, nor cobwebs he should spread the straw on it. Then he should there and then effect the religious death called Advara 3. 4. Page 73. This is the truth, speaking truth, free from passion, crossing, the samsara, abating irresoluteness, knowing all truth and not being known, leaving this frail body, overcoming all sorts of pains and troubles through trust in this, religion, he accomplishes this fearful, religious death. Even thus, he will in due time put an end to existence. This has been adopted by many who were free from delusion, it is good, wholesome, proper, beatifying, meritorious. Thus I say. 5. Footnotes. 72 colon 1. There is no finite verb in this sentence, nor any word which could supply its place. The old Gaina authors were so accustomed to surround their meaning with exclusions and exceptions, and to fortify it with a maze of parentheses, that they sometimes apparently forgot to express the verb, especially when they made use of fragments of old verses, as in the present case. 72 colon 2 This is one of the most frequent gammas or identical passages which form a rather questionable ornament of the sutra style. The gammas are usually abbreviated, for example, villages, and c, all down to capital, or eggs, and c, all down to cobwebs, which we shall presently meet with. 72 colon 3 Advara, or Ijitamarana, consists in starving oneself, while keeping within a limited space. A religious death is usually permitted only to those who have during twelve years undergone preparatory penance, consisting chiefly in protracted periods of fasting. The scholiast says that in our case, the atvara is not enjoined for sick persons who can no longer sustain austerities, but they should act as if they were to commit the atvara suicide, hoping that in five or six days the sickness would leave them, in which case they are to return to their former life. But if they should not get better, but die, it is all for the best.